Hello, good morning. My name is Jerry. Today I'll be giving you a, a presentation of my final year project at NUS, Vitech Electronics Engineering. The topic is uh, Intelligent Energy Management of Grids with Energy Storage. I would like to thank my professors for assisting me and guiding me through this four years of degree program. They are Professor Saho, Professor Dipti, and Dipya. Okay, so let's start off with the presentation. For this project, we'll be using a software simulation, Homer Pro. Homer Pro is a software that is used to find out the schematics that you want to implement for electrical grid and the cost, the lowest cost and the desired cost that you need before implementing it in real life. We can find out the components, catalog, the equipment that you want to use and the design the schematics before implementing a smart electrical grid system. That's for the first part of the project. And the second part of the project will be investigating on the, the possible innovative solutions moving forward to build on Singapore's electrical grid system for a renewable energy source. So for homeable project, this is the introduction. We have the map to show to look the location that we come from to check the solar irradiance uh, yeah, for that particular location. And it's pretty easy to use. So we have the loads, we have the components that we want to use to plug in the renewable source of energy. We have the wind turbines, the PV panels, converters, the hydroelectric, electrolyzer, and so on. And then we compute this results that we want to implement for our system that we want we hope to use on the particular location that we want to implement this project and calculate. They will show us the results for the lowest net present cost, the liberalized uh, cost of energy and the return of investments, whether is it uh, positive, worth pursuing or not before implementing it in real life. So yeah, so these are the definitions for net present cost the rise cost, energy, and return on investment, which is the average cost of per kilowatt hour of useful electrical energy produced by the system. So this is the objective of my project. They are to use formal flow software simulation for flower wind microgrid case to find out the most cost effective MPC, LCOE, and ROI return on investment and reduce the operating and maintenance cost. To evaluate the final schematics and the components selection. And to list the solutions and innovative methods implementing to work an intelligent energy management of grids in the Singapore context. To ensure load sharing among sources to reduce the power loss of the system and to enhance the system reliability and power quality. Better operational performance for operating conditions in terms of loss minimization, energy efficiency, such as increased power generation, increased renewable generation power output, improved energy consumption. And lastly, to implement an intelligent energy management we use the, the IT and communication systems and how we're going to communicate to implement this project in real life. So, the value proposition for this project is that there will be a 23% of return of investment for this design model schematics that I've come up with for the flower wind context. They will be cost effective by implementing the system with the lowest NPC, LCOE and operating costs. And of course, to transform Singapore landscape by implementing renewable energy source production like solar panel uh, and a lot more that will be introduced into you later. And exploring innovative and enterprising methods uh, to create renewable energy source. So what enterprising uh, solutions and things that we can uh, create to come up for Singapore to move forward in terms of energy uh, management. 
So for this project, we will be using uh, some parameters based on the polar bobin microgrid parameters. So in polar bobin, this will be the microgrid that is used, and this will be the cost for the solar panels, converters, and generators that we use for these input parameters for this case. So what does an intelligent energy management grid consist of? It will be an integrating of the uh, fossil fuels and the renewable source of energy to reduce our reliance on fossil fuels. Some uh, renewable sources of energy could be uh, hydroelectric, solar panels, you know, for this project, we'll be, we'll be investigating on what's possible to implement for Singapore context. So, the existing challenges of PD's, PD problems are effects on power quality, ramping, current backflow, and mismatch between the demand and the PD outputs. So, we solve this problem by incorporating the battery system and the PD. This able to uh, mitigate the problems that are found on for solar panels. So for the results of the former probe, we have the comparison of different battery bank performance for the NL, PC, LTOE and ROI findings. So we found that for the first case, when there is no uh, battery banks, uh, in the schematics, this will be the L COE price and the NPC price. The second case is that we're using the lead acid, and this will be the L COE and NPC price. For the third case, we'll be using the lithium ion battery, and this is the NPC price, L COE price, and the finding schematics. And the fourth case, we'll be using the magnesium flow battery. And this are the price as such. So this is a table tabulating on the prices of the of the software run. So for and we found that we can see that without any battery banks connected to the the MPC net cost, the average cost of energy and total operating costs are the highest among the four runs. This implies that some extent of uh, battery banks when incorporated with PE panels actually help to reduce the NPC L COE and the total operating cost of the system. So based on the uh, battery bank simulation results, magnesium flow battery banks are cho chose because they give the lowest price for the software run simulation. Now we also go and investigate other types of schematics and find out if it's effective or not for this case, which is a solar wind microgrid context. So we actually tried out to implement it with only solar panels, that means fully 100% renewable energy. And we found out that the return of investment is actually negative. So we cannot have just solar panels to generate all our electrical inputs. Otherwise, there will be a high cost and there's not a lot of return on investment. And then we have the second, the second uh, investigation will find out the grid connectors. Using the grid connectors, we also have a negative return on investment. So grid is also out. Then there are also other possible connections that we can build on the software. They try the hydroelectric, wind turbine, grids, and the electrolyzer with the genset and the battery and the solar panels. So these are the possible uh, renewable energy that you can implement in the system. So we found from all these uh, simulation tests that um, only PV panels to generate all our energy needs is not uh, sustainable. And connected is also out because the negative return on investment. Wind turbines are also out because it's not feasible in Singapore context. So these are the best optimal settings, which is the 
um, which is the combination of the gen generator sets, the PV, and the vanadium flow battery legs. We will find out that we have a return on investment of possibly 25%, which is what we want. And then we compare on the diesel prices for sensitivity case for the diesel price when it was a dollar and then 10% more and 20% off at a dollar and eighty five, two dollar twenty two cents. And what are the, are the MP, what are the net present costs, the operating costs that that will result if we implement this project? Yeah, so the evaluation from this uh, uh, simulation, diesel price changes are observed to have an impact on the NPV LCOM OM cost prices. It is generally observed from this simulation for diesel price at one to two dollars, ten percent increase to two dollars twenty two cents, twenty percent increase. But cost savings are not for the increase of diesel prices in the oil market, fluctuating with time. The future shows that incorporation of uh, battery banks and PV are key combinations to lower the, end, the overall cost of uh, implementation. So these are the simulation results from the, from the software. We will find the uh, renewable penetration percentage of the solar panels, you know, the graphs. This is a battery bank and, yeah. and the monthly and hydroelectric rough plot. So for the next scenario, we'll also investigate on electric cars as a load window of finance. So for here, if we if Singapore wants to implement the electric cars on the solar wind context, it is will give a negative ROI if not investment. So this is due to the power calculations. An average electric car costs about approximately 0.2 kilowatts per hour per kilometer. In Singapore, there's around like one million cars on the road daily. So that adds up to about 200,000 kilometer watts per hour per kilometer. So evaluation. The result, electric cars that model similar load demands of the amount of vehicles on Singapore road daily was found to be not feasible. The return investment was negative, not feasible for micro cloud wind microgrid context. It's IEM is design parameters. Because of the small scale genset power capacity and handling limits, we are unable to handle the large amount of vehicles on Singapore roads for this case. To cater for this problem, we need the capacity of power and scale of the solar panel implementation must be scaled up to meet the energy demands of electric cars on the road of Singapore. So the final schematics implemented. I've chosen uh, to use a uh, hydroelectric with so solar panels moving forward because uh, Singapore still does, does not have uh, hydroelectric because of land constraints. But in this final project, we're trying to create uh, man-made hydroelectric machines and innovate other you know enterprising ideas that you can think of to improve the energy management with renewable energy source. So the reasons for this schematic design is because it also has a positive 23% return on investments and it creates a new path towards harvesting uh, renewable energy. There is the addition of hydroelectric energy source built and then discussed, discussed about hydroelectric boilers or redesign our reservoirs to create a small scale hydroelectric plus solar PV IEME system. So, for the next part of the project, after our simulation software, we found out we already got the schematics that we want to implement for the solar wind context. If for this software, if let's say you are from other location of a country, 
you need to uh, input the type of uh, a design that you want to suit the location that you come from. Then they will show you the results whether this project is worth implementing. So you basically will choose some of the schematics from the components that we want to use, the lowest net present cost that is affordable before implementing in real life. So that is the usefulness of a Homo Pro software that you can do to find out the components that you want to use, the schematics that is probably uh, relevant to the location that you want to design this electrical grid with renewable source of energy. Mostly on the focus of renewable source of energy for this case. So for chapter two, we're looking at the solutions on how to implement an intelligent energy management of grids. We study about the battery banks that we have implemented and why we want to use it. So vanadium battery banks is to, can be used to replace uh, lithium ion batteries because it can be charged many times, it's extremely durable and produce a non-flammable material and it's suitable for large scale applications that is for power grid. So other factors that we can improve the uh, energy management would be the power factor optimizing. So we study a math concept about power factor. This power factor refers to the ability of the electrical system to convert electrical current into useful work. And it's a ratio of the true to apparent power. So improving the P power factor can maximize current carrying capacity, improve voltage to equipment, reduce power losses, and lower energy bills. The simplest way to improve power factor is to add power factor correction capacitors to the electrical system. Power factor capacitors act as reactive current generators. They help offset the non-working power by conductive loads and prevent the power factor close to unity. Well, because an inefficient power factor will increase the current utility bill because the power factor will cause the KVA demand to be higher than the KV demand. So this is some math concept of the electrical grids that we can actually try and monitor the system by adding capacitors. Let's say there's a lot of inductive loads. So we can manage this power, uh, uh, power system by monitoring the one power factors which will reduce cost and energy efficiency. So the third one would be the implementation of solar panels. We're looking at the different solar panels in the, in the market. We have the thin film technologies. Uh, what the PV consists of? The cables connect converter and inverter. So we study about the components of the, of the solar panels and the types of solar panels in the market, in the off grid, isolated, and we have the PV installation connected to the grid type solar panels. So the most cost efficient uh, panels on the market is about 22.8% and the majority of the panels is about 15 to 17 percent efficiency rating. So some, some power panels are known for the most efficient solar panel brands available in the market. Then the parameters to monitor in a power grid. Okay, in this thesis report, I will be sharing some of my working experiences as an electric technical officer in a power electrical department. So monitoring physics parameters is a key of our job because this denotes the health of the power system equipment such as the battery banks, impedance checking, the battery water levels, the bus stop temperature monitoring and the transformer pressure money inspection. Yeah, monitoring these uh, physics parameters are also a key, key to intelligent energy management. They are like the temperature, the impedance, your circuit breaker, the timers, the voltage, current, oil pressure and the battery water. Level. So these parameters are actually key in mind when we when the maintenance team uh, uh, do their money inspection and do the pointers of how we're going to maintain this power system. And these are some of the equipment that we bring with us. And uh, the power meter, the 
thermos can handle the secondary injection testing work. To find out the, whether the circuit breaker or timer that we have used is able to withstand the fault currents and is able to trip and that particular uh, over current. So they check that our circuit breakers are working. So these are the measuring devices the engineering team would prepare to maintain and check the energy grid system daily. There are multimeter, fan meter, scanners, and secondary injection tests. So this project is also creating new solutions to harness the hydroelectric power. So I cannot wait two uh, solutions, two new solutions moving forward. That is to innovate a man-made hydroelectric boiler. As you know, boiling water within a small scale can get the water moving really fast. And this fast move of boiling water can actually create kinetic energy that will actually generate electricity. Hydroelectric power should be implemented in Singapore, but although we have land constraints, we could overcome this problem by some engineering solutions. One of it is uh, to design a man-made hydroelectric boiler machine. The second solution is to redesign our reservoirs such that we have a small scale version of hydroelectric system. Then we will be able to use the free energy from kinetic energy too. So lastly, we will be looking at the, what we learned in the electronic engineering, that is to use our uh, electronic box to control the system, to monitor the system, so that, so that uh, it has become an intelligent energy management grid. So we have an Arduino solar charge controller that will be able to monitor the power needs of the uh, solar PV. We can also have a light sensor, the growth light sensor that will be able to save energy when you have turn off when there is after a certain time when there is no, no users. We also have the temperature sensor to sense the temperature of the power equipment. The so the current sensor is very important because high current or residual current are threats to the electrical components and safety issues. The implementation of current sensors will allow instant timeline tracking of the nominal currents of each key location. So if you have a total incorporation of all these electronics boards, renewable energy, your internet network Wi-Fi, all that coming together will be an intelligent energy management upgrade. From the solar PV, we have the battery bank for storage, and then we have what we learned in the ETA electronics. We can program the, the current sensor, the temperature sensor, and the chip box to monitor the PV panels and the power equipment, uh, voltage, current, and whatnot. And via the internet and the Wi-Fi, uh, the staff will be able to find out the condition of the power equipment at, at any time instances. So all that incorporating together will make up the, an intelligent energy management upgrade. And next, we we'll also come up with another creative idea that Singapore can implement, which is uh, the kinetic energy gene. So the kinetic energy gene is to uh, redesign our, our gene to create electric, free electrical energy. And not only that, we also are able to charge the entry fee for users coming to use our genes. At the same time, uh, we can use the people using this gen, gene equipment to generate free electricity, which in the long run will also help uh, Singapore to rely less on fossil fuels and save costs in the long term. So, Lastly, we have two other steps that uh, NSG has implemented. That is, we in, in, install solar panels on every HDB flex. So every HDB flex will be able to tap on renewable source of energy to also reduce the solar fossil fuels, or reliance on fossil fuels. And also because the country needs more energy as we advance more forward and in the high-tech uh, society. And 
lastly, to further overcome the land constraints, uh, Keppel Offshore Marine have also implemented the living life ships. That is the solar panels on some of their ships that can uh, capture the solar energy and transport it to Singapore. So just to increase the solar panel capacity. So it's probably just to answer the electric cars that you're going to implement those. So to match the power demands, we have to increase our uh, power capacity for our electrical system. Yeah, so I've come to the end of my project of investigation and research about the possible solutions to implement an intelligent energy management of waste with energy storage. For the first part of the project, we use common flow to figure out the schematics that we want to use, the components from the catalog that we have, to find out the lowest uh, cost of energy, liberalized cost of energy, net present cost, and operating cost, and also the reason of investment, whether it's positive or negative. So we want to have a positive uh, return on investment for our schematics. So that is the main key idea for the Hormone Pro simulation for the first part. For the second part, we investigate on the different solutions that will make an efficient energy management of grids. That includes uh, the solar panels. We also want to implement the hydroelectric energy by innovating uh, man-made hydroelectric boilers, redesign our reservoirs to harness a small-scale hydroelectric energy because hydroelectric energy produces quite a lot of renewable energy as well. So we want to add on and charge the path moving forward for Singapore to tap on more renewable energy sources that are safe and to expand our power capacity for renewable, so renewable sources. We also touch on the the using of electronic floats. We're from the retail electronics, so we can use the programming that we learned, the C++ and the Python language to write the electronics board to program the sensors, the light sensors, the current sensor, temperature sensors, and the Wi-Fi network connection, the PV panels, the battery storage, the electronic board, the internet Wi-Fi connection, and to the maintenance team. So this full total cooperation allows an intelligent energy management of grids. We also explore on the possible innovative engineering solutions as an engineer we can use, which is the redesign of the uh, our reservoirs to harness uh, the power of what can power of the kinetic energy from the water and boiling water which is running really fast so we can redesign a machine that can allow the harness hydroelectric power. Yeah, then the last solution I have is this uh, kinetic energy gym which you know as an enterprising project we Singaporeans like to exercise to keep fit and healthy lifestyle. So we will not have more gyms uh, in, over across Singapore that we can uh, charge a fee for gym entry. And not only that, we can also make use of the users to generate free electricity. So that's another source of renewable energy. Free renewable source of energy that we can tap on. And also an enterprising project that we can use. Yeah, and this is the post my uh, final project poster. Yeah, with that, I have come to the end of my presentation. And this is my uh, research for this FYP and the solution for that I have. And the enterprising solutions and the engineering uh, methods that can, we can use to solve some of the, and improve some of the electrical energy grid system that I can that I've uh, researched for so far. Alright, thank you. Thank you guys.